Anybody else want to share something about communication or work through some issues that they're having? I mean, I'll just to say that from what you were saying before, I think that um, um, basically from the beginning, my family just said that you know you look okay, you know you look pretty good. When I, I went back to work, that you know oh we're fine. They're, they're basically they just dropped off mm -hmm. the planet. Um, and it was struck a struggle, and um, and I think that when I try to explain to them now, you know, that after my surgery, I try to explain to them, you know, I still don't feel very well, or I, like you were saying, I have headaches, or I'm mm -hmm. tired, and you know, and, I, and I'm alone, and so I have to do a lot of things by mm -hmm. myself. It, it was. Um, so it was more like, like my dad or my mom were just like, oh, all right, and maybe you shouldn't, you know, work. It works so much, or if you, but you know, not understanding. Oh, well, if I don't work, then I'm not getting, you know, paid. Um, or just not understanding even little little daily skills. Um, like and, and these two have been very helpful. That's just why I asked them to come. And, you know, just things like I live upstairs to help just carry mm -hmm. things that are heavy for me. And um, they just don't understand. And, mm -hmm. and, and just the repetitiveness of explaining mm -hmm. to them. And then like I think um, uh, Jan said that just the well, communication is going on throughout the family. I, I don't think that um, that it's that it's clear. Like my sister said, oh, I didn't know that you had um, pain in your like a weakness in your arm. Mm -hmm. That it's just it's just it's just weird that it's not known throughout the right. family. Right. And and you get to the point too where you don't feel the same over mm -hmm. and over again. Mm -hmm. And it's it's it's. I mean, it's to a point that, I mean, I'm, that I don't really have as much communication with them because I, I'm very, like, disappointed. Mm hmm Yeah. What is your name? Chris? Yeah. Chris. Your story is so common, and I, I can't tell you how many times I hear of how people are disappointed in, in the people that they thought would be around them, their family, the people who are supposed to be the ones always there and always helping and then when something like this happens they sort of don't perhaps rise to the occasion and it's interesting because there's so many different issues that could be at play and it's so hard to say exactly what it is but so many times especially when it's a child sometimes the parents don't want to believe that there are issues so a parent would rather look at you and say you know what, my daughter looks beautiful and, and she's okay. Because perhaps somewhere in, in them there's some denial that, oh my God, my daughter can't be sick or my daughter can't be in pain or I don't want my daughter to have, have any discomfort or headaches or fatigue and so if I don't see it, I'm going to push it away and believe it's not there. And then I will ask you, as Jen had pointed out, who usually had that role of being the communicator? Who was the one in your family, Chris, that would sort of keep everybody in the loop of what's been going on? Um, I guess my grandmother, but she, she's not very reliable. I mean, she's 90. I mean, she would tell everybody, but she's not, she, you know, she, she, I mean, I tell her, but she gets her information mm -hmm. a little screwed. I mean, my dad tries, but I think he only hears what he wants to hear, like yeah. you're saying. Yeah. Like he, um, I just saw him at a recent event, and I mean, he just was didn't understand. Like, I mean, I have I've lost a lot of weight since I've seen him, and he he just he didn't understand that some of it is from the after effects of the surgery, and um, he was just very concerned. But he just was like, well, I don't understand why is this happening. But I mean, I feel like I've been telling him, but it's I think it's just going in one ear and out the other. Mm -hmm. So what is it 
you want your family to know? If you could say it to us, like what, what would it be that you want them to know? Well, I mean, I think I say it to him and my family, but um, I mean, I just think that I, I, I want them to know that, I, I, that, that it is difficult still. It's not easy, but I, I mean, I'm tr I would like to do things. Mm -hmm. I do want to be like who I was. If that's not going to change, I mm -hmm. want to go back to do what I can do, but I'd like to have somebody to rely on mm -hmm. if, um, if I needed help. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I don't think that that's, I don't think it's them. Okay. You know, I really don't. I would never fall them. I, I would fall <laughs> them before I would fall, you know, I really wouldn't. And mm -hmm. I just think that because they would not, like think you said, if I, they wouldn't understand, like, why, why are you too tired to, right. to okay. go grocery shopping or why okay. can't you carry? And it almost sounds like there's a lack of awareness or information on your family's part in that maybe they're not familiar with what a brain tumor is or what some of the effects are or how that, you know, can, can translate to everyday life. I mean, Right, and, and groups are intimidating for a lot of people. And, and you can see this room should be filled. There's a ton of people who are having issues with family dynamics and communication, but people are a little scared. It may be a little touchy-feely, or they just don't do well in a group situation. They don't know what to expect. They're a little fearful of coming in. And you know, so groups, some people love them and, and can't get enough, and they like support group junkies. They go to every support group there is. And, and other people, it just scares them. And I almost think sometimes if they can read a book about you know, what it is you're going through. And I know we have there's a library here. I know Nancy's always got a lot of good information. Because sometimes it's interesting. But to see it in print almost validates it for somebody. So you may be able to talk about all your symptoms, but until somebody can read it and say, oh, wow, it almost doesn't, it's not real. And so it might make sense to find something about it, even simply on the internet. You know, put in you know, your tumor and, and maybe the effects of it and, and all the effects that you, you talk about, the weakness, the fatigue, you know, concentration. You know, what, I'm sure every symptom that you're feeling is going to be listed right there. And that may be even a, a, a decent icebreaker to just say, you know, this is what you know, I've been trying to say. Like, I, I really am trying to get better, and I want to be back to the way I was. But you know, I do have some, some real issues, and it's not just me. It's, it's most people that have you know, had a diagnosis of a brain tumor, that have gone through surgery, that have taken the path that I've taken. Um, and, and that may. Make it, make it real, and, and I tell you, I, I work with people that 10, 20 years down the road, whether it's themselves or a family member, they'll finally read a book, and it'll be like, oh my God, like I never got it before. You know, I thought I was just losing my mind, or I thought I was just depressed because I, I, all I could do was sleep, or my mind and I couldn't focus, and you know, until they sometimes see it, and until they're ready to realize it, it doesn't sometimes sink in that, this is what's, what's happening. And you know, I can only imagine how difficult it would be for a family to recognize that, that their daughter is having issues. And so, like I said, there may be a barrier with that. And, and again, you, know, you look well. So it's, it's hard to get that. Well, why, if she looks so good, why isn't she not back to her old self yet? And, and that's something we hear so often is like, you know, aren't you over that tumor already? You know, we talk about that, Nancy, right? How many times in the support group? Almost every time. Yeah. And I mean, you look at Nancy, a long-term survivor, you know, who, who, I mean, does everything well. But, you know, certainly we don't know the insides and, and what Nancy has to do and the energy it takes and, and what strategies she does to get through each day. But, you know, we look at Nancy and we expect her to be a certain way. 
but you know there's there's very likely some issues that she deals with and and you know you talk about brain injury um, brain tumor awareness you know it's almost this is what we're all trying to do is make people more aware so that when you say I've had a brain tumor and I've had surgery it's like oh you know I get that and I get what that means did you have something to add oh uh, yeah just I mean I know it's not it's not my grandmother got Alzheimer's disease mm -hmm. and our family we didn't really know much about it and um, one of my aunts got this book and it explained like I know it's you know similar but mm -hmm. uh, different stages of it and explained yeah. like the progressions of it I mean I know there's different stages of surgery and everything and she said this book was unbelievable she passed it around to her aunt yeah. just explaining you know the different phases that they go in and it just like it was like almost like a yes. click in the head it was like yes. wow she did that now she did that a year later right I right mean, it was just unbelievable how much a book again, yes yeah